Today we are talking about the five things I've learned from Chris Coleman. Let's get to it. What's happening guys, welcome in. As always, my name is Dave Major, and if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting subscribe, liking this video, sharing it around. Today we are talking about the five things I have picked up from Chris Coleman, because if you're anything like me, you have an absolute favorite drummer that you obsess over. You buy their DVDs, their books, you follow them on social media, you just want to get all that information and hope that you might play 1% as well as them. Well, that's me with Chris Coleman. In my opinion, he is up there with the greatest of all time, along with Vinny, Dave Weckl, Benny, his playing just speaks to me in a way that some others don't. So the first thing that I picked up from Chris Coleman is to be fearless. Now, whenever I watch Chris play, he is just taking all the risks all the time. He just plays exactly what he wants in that moment. And now he's good enough to pull it off, so it sounds like he's, almost to me, it sounds like he's just planned every single note, but I know that's not the case. And I'm trying to put that in my playing. I don't know whether it's just being British, whether it's just being a little bit reserved, maybe a bit self-conscious about my own playing, but I'm never truly fearless when I play. And that's what I wanna be, I just wanna play. I just wanna play what's in my head and not care if it comes out well or bad, just play, because I feel like that's when I'm most authentic. Same way as having a conversation, it's, it's important to be authentic, so when I'm being authentic on the drums, I wanna take risks, and I'm trying to get that into my playing. Number two is left foot splashes. Now, he's not the only drummer to do this, but I've seen the way I've seen him do it really changed the way I thought about left foot splashes and actually heel toe as well on the bass drum. Now I used to think that you had to splash down and hit just at the apex of where the, the, the foot plate as it were and the pedal hit, just right at that point. But I saw him do it side to side, out, almost like tap dancing. As soon as I saw that, this made sense. So the third thing I picked up from Chris is to pay attention to the melody of the song and interpret that on the drums. Whether that's in your fills, on your bass drum, in your grooves, whether you're just expanding on it and stretching it in the way that he does. Take the melody, the melody is king, and play that through the drums. So let me talk about it though. Let me show you. Right, so, check this. So the snare's picking out the melodic part of it. So, gang, gang, gang. We'll crash cymbals to go with little accents. Hear the fill, check this. Ooh, I love that, so good. So he's picking out the melody and that's influencing the fill choice. Not the orchestration, not a generic fill, but the melody influences what you play. And that's the big thing I picked up from Chris is that you would use any melody, any part of any song to influence the grooves and the fills and the chops that you play. And that means you're more a part of the song. You're not just playing on top, you're not just wheelbarrowing in all the things that you learned. That's what I learned from Chris. So number four on the list is do the work. Chris has worked at his drumming. He's done all the books, he's learned all the styles, he's worked his ass off, and that's something I relate to um, and I respect. So I try to make sure that I am doing the work, that I am there, you know, working as hard as I can on my craft as a drummer, using the classic text and going deep and making sure that I don't just scratch the surface of my knowledge, that I work really hard to go deep and really control all of my drumming. Now number five is gonna be a bit weird, but it is to be a Ferrari. Now I've heard this analogy before, but Chris is the best one at summing this up. Now, we all know Chris Coleman as uber drummer, gospel chops, soloist extraordinaire, but realistically, he's a guy who plays the drums and gets paid to play the drums for artists, for songs, for bands. There's probably hundreds of records that he played on that you have no idea that he played on because it doesn't sound like Chris Coleman shedding, all, shedding over the top of this music. So think about it like this. You're a Ferrari on the motorway or the highway or the autobahn if you're in Germany. And you are in second gear at the absolute speed limit, whatever that is in your country, right? So you have four more gears to go to. You have all this headroom that you can just cycle right through or you can be a clapped out mini, or think of, in your country, think of like the worst oldest car. So you're foot to the floor, top, top gear, and you're just about reaching that maximum speed on a flat. As Soon as you come to a hill, will you start rolling backwards? And I don't wanna be the mini, I wanna be the Ferrari. I want to be able to play so much more than I choose to play 
on the instrument. It's not that you're required to play and you begrudgingly play simple stuff. It's that you choose to play the simple stuff because it serves the music better, but you have all this headroom to go to. And that's what I'm striving for in my own playing and my students playing. And it's what I try to get across on davemajormusic.com is that we are trying to build our ability to control the drums and play and practice properly to get this deep knowledge and then use like 0.1% of it when you're actually playing gigs. Because then gigs are fun and then you can be the Ferrari on the gig. Sound better, make everyone feel good and hopefully keep playing with better musicians. So the five things I learned from Chris Coleman are to be fearless, to, to work on your left foot splash to create texture, to, to focus on the melody of the music that you're playing and interpret it through the drums, to do the work, the hard work, the slog, to make yourself a better drummer and ultimately to be the Ferrari on the motorway, not the Mini. So let me know in the comments below who your favorite drummer is and what you learned from them. But until next time, I'll catch you later.